Did you know that Jupiter is 1,321.3 times larger than planet Earth? Did you know that blue whales can be over 30 meters long? Did you know that New Zealand had its own native species of crocodile? In the space of 15 seconds today, 14 maybe, you've learned something, okay? It might not be completely new to you, but you've learned something. Science literacy is imperative for adapting to and understanding modern societies. But access to science learning outside of compulsory schooling is kind of hard to come by. For most adults, they struggle to come across this kind of education because even if they have access to the necessary content, they may, may lack the necessary knowledge or comprehension to be even able to understand what it is that they're reading. This is particularly true for subjects not normally taught in school, like anthropology, uh, geology, and astronomy. This is where museums come in. Museums can provide a unique learning opportunity that builds on experiences you've already had to create a unique learning opportunity that can extend your science learning beyond the limits of compulsory schooling. I'm interested in the way that museums communicate science and influence science learning. I'm interested in the motivations and the processes of museum staff and the responses and the reactions of museum visitors. Now, because museums are centers for leisure as well as learning, people aren't interested in old fashioned learning techniques. So they're not interested in lectures and walls of texts and dead things in cabinets. Instead, they want their learning to be interactive and they want to be presented with just the right amount of information. Some museum curators refer to this as teaching people what they almost already know, just like you did two minutes ago. My case study is the Auckland Medical Museum Trust's pop-up traveling exhibition, Brave Hearts, the New Zealand cardiac story, which tells the history of cardiac medicine in Aotearoa, New Zealand. I'm talking to the exhibition developers and the museum visitors to see how the museum has affected their perceptions of science communication. I'm particularly talking to the museum visitors before and after they go to the exhibition to test how their intention to learn varies from their experience of learning. I'm going to combine this with demographic data so that I can draw a picture of what science learning in New Zealand really looks like. Now the outcome of my research is going to sort of be helpful in a few different ways. The first thing is it's going to develop learning theory and informal science learning research in New Zealand, particularly for our context. It's going to help the museum trust to build a picture of whether they can ever do this on a permanent scale. And it's going to help uh, museums and science learning centres in New Zealand to be more effective and more engaging so they can teach you what you almost already know. Thank you.